we talk about the wave function of matter, we talk about the fact that matter, physical, what we think is matter, is energy that can, is moving at a frequency. The frequency of the molecules and the atoms in this are moving at the speed of light. Now, because the speed of light is a constant throughout the universe, this universe, it means that pretty much all objects within this universe can touch and interact with each other. Okay. But if I were to take this rock and I were to alter the frequency of its matter, say the molecular structure was the atoms are no longer electrons which are orbiting the atoms at the speed of light it's all down to electron field displacement theory and if I were to increase the accelerate the electrons moving around the atomic the atoms or decrease this speed, I would no longer be able to see and feel this object. It would appear to disappear, but the object would still exist. It's not any kind of a ghost. It's still physically there, but it would phase into another space. The third dimension is vast. The third dimension is not just this universe. Well, we talk about parallel universes that co coincide alongside our universe. They move at a constant at the speed of light. We'll say 186,000 miles a second, roughly. When we talk about other dimensions, other third dimensional spaces, they don't just move left and right, they move up and down. Often people think of up and down as a higher, lower dimension. That's actually wrong. There are higher dimensions, yes. But there are also higher dimensions of the third dimension, where physical matter exists at a much faster, accelerated uh, rate. As you've seen in my infrared photos on ET hybrids and on various other groups, you can see the beings resemble the extraterrestrials and hybrid beings everyone has remembered having contact with in their uh, extraterrestrial encounters. That is due to the fact that they are moving at a different rate that cannot be seen with the naked eye, cannot be photographed with ordinary camera. They can, if they materialize, if they change the frequency of their matter from the speed of light that they're moving at, to a much lower rate of the speed of light for us, for our matter. Then you can see and touch them. It's that simple. They have a technology which is somewhere between 50,000 to maybe close to 80,000, I don't know, somewhere between 50,000 years ahead of us, where they can alter the frequency, the, the change... Let's take the word frequency out for a minute. Um, they can deaccelerate and accelerate the electron mass around their atomic structure. And it remains a constant. Once you do that, you alter that speed of atomic structure. It stays that way. It's a constant unless you change it again. They can do that to me and I can be accelerated and moved out of this space and into their space. In my contact with them, I have received a technology that is here on Earth that some scientists have already worked with that guided me to these researchers, these scientists. They gave me the plans and they said, here, build this. And I did. Um, but 
this is a work in progress, this one. Uh, I have built others. But when you build these, you can't touch them. They give off an extremely high voltage ionic uh, surge, which is uncomfortable to the touch, simply because the ions that are coming off of these spheres, uh, the discharge um, is causing a phase variance within your own atomic structure in your hand. You will feel your nervous system then de interprets this as a cold burning sensation in your arms and hands, in your chest. And you almost feel like you're losing your breath. Uh, what these things do, and they have done for us, is uh, in our research with them, these quantum spheres, is they have, uh, now this isn't an act, I wouldn't be able to hold this if I was done with it. I'm not done with this yet. That's copper, that's plastic. They, they, they work on the principle of capacitors, on, on a capacitor. Um, what these things do is they bring in and harness faster than light particles that do exist. And then they discharge them very rapidly. In much the same way, a Van de Graaff generator, they work in the same principles of Van de Graaff generator. And so a Van de Graaff generator builds up a huge ionic electron charge, and then it will just discharge this as in the form of bolts of lightning. Well, that, that's fields moving at the speed of light constant to our, our dimension. But imagine a Van de Graaff generator that draws in some other kind of ions that are moving faster than light. Well, you think, well, that, that sounds like something CERN scientists should be working on. Well, it, honestly, I agree. <clears throat> it's, it's quite fantastic, isn't it? Well, the results were equally as dramatic and fantastic as we ended up hearing echoes of ourselves an hour into the future. And I went back to the drawing board to explain this and try to work it out within physics and keep it to that level, because I'd like to be able to present this work to people at some point in the future. Um, they don't have to believe where I got the information from. That's unimportant, as long as they're looking at the equations. Because I doubt mainstream people are going to really take that very seriously. Aliens gave me that technology. In any case, whatever the purpose of these findings uh, it, it's either for my own truth, my, my need, or whatever. It helped me uh, to get into the woods and the forest out here. And it, Well, they, they told me they would be in the woods, and I went out there and got these pictures. And having close contact with these beings, this is the information upload that I got from them. I went back and tested this, and this is exactly what I came up with. It's not powered by any conventional power source power source that it comes from are the ion fields in our environment around us. They have a, a toroidal transformer at their core, what you call a, a donut transformer. And that, that's a very key and very interesting electronic device that's often misunderstood and it is, it, it is the key element in understanding vortex theory physics um, wormholes, things like this, is a very, very, very interesting, very simple to build, an extremely fascinating physics toy. I call it a physics toy. A toroidal transformer is a donut-shaped transformer, for those of you who don't know, for those of you that do. Uh, research all you can on this. There are physicists at MIT that are still playing with these things. They're in everything. They're in television sets, monitors, computers power supplies, they're all over the planet. But they're only used for, for you know, basic functions. Power regulation, up volt, down volt. I got told, and what I got when I got in the forest and took those pictures, they were telling me, you have a very important piece of technology right there with this device. And that's the core element of the, of the quantum spheres. And our universe can be described as a, as a toroid. Vortex, vortex physics, look up vortex wave theory physics, and um, yes, it's important where the information came from, but it's, it's, it's just to say that, yes, they are in another, di in another dimensional space, 
And yes, I can go there too. I have managed with experiments with these QCRs, quantum crystal um, resonators or quantum spheres. Um, I have literally shocking things have happened where I wasn't there anymore. And it was witnessed by other people where I was simply in this, I was here, I was operating this, as I was saying, sorry about that, as I was saying, um, it was witnessed and seen, I'm now revealing this for the first time, I was here and I wasn't here. My mobile phone is a testament to that evidence of what happened next. My mobile phone read four minutes off from the clocks around me. Four whole minutes off. In, a, in a, an effect I'm calling electron field displacement theory, but I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, the extraterrestrial hybrid beings and the Zetas and all the beings that made them move in another space because their matter is moving at a different different rate from ours. And they do exist, they are very real, and they can walk through walls for this purpose. And that's easy to explain. Solid matter moves at the constant, as I told you, the speed of light. The electrons in the atomic structure. If I take one of these devices, and I'm still working on it, and if it were I'm not at this point with them yet. No, no, uh, no not, not like that. But theoretically, if you took one of these devices and you were able to have a greater control over it, I can't think of a reason why you can't um, phase walk through a wall. Or if you took it to military application, you had a battleship at sea, or say a submarine, or a... Um, an aircraft like an F-22 could simply disappear off radar and reappear halfway around the planet or fly through a mountain without ever touching the interior of the mountain and, it, and exit somewhere, somewhere else where every other aircraft would fly into the mountain. This is, a, this is outstanding. This is an outstanding uh, thing to get involved with. But I don't, I don't intend to take it to the military. I mean, that, that, that would be devastating. That would be awful. Why would they give me this and I take it to the military? Goodness, uh, that's, a, that's a terrible idea. But my discoveries are my own. I don't expect you to believe any of this. But just know that they do exist. They're in another reality. But they're here all the time around us. So we have to stop thinking of this in the sense of another dimension, in the sense that there's that that removed, another universe where they're way out there. They're actually right here. It may even form the basis of their interstellar travel as well, which I'm still exploring that, how they were able to go from planet A to planet B and not really have to pass through the space in the middle because space itself has this tie-up to the property of the speed of light. That's a bit complicated there, but if you move another phase, your matter... You're going to be moving through space, like, well, yeah, wormholing, basically, through another space, subspace, and you could end up, you could end up 50 light years away uh, within a matter of minutes. It's faster than light travel is what it is. It's simply by altering the atomic speed of your own atomic structure. Then you are you you are now moving hundreds of times faster than the speed of light. You can easily travel with very little power exerted from your engine anywhere you want in the galaxy. You don't have to worry about hitting all that debris in the middle, all those asteroids and rocks and all that stuff that would tear your ship up. And all this information comes from them. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video. You've all been very sweet, very good. Thank you very much.